Hello, I am Scott Manley and we are back in Kerbal Space Program again. Yes, I have been working on my space planes and I finally made something that uh, actually justifies, it goes beyond near Kerbin orbit and will go a lot further in fact, as we will see. It is a variation on the previous design. We now have three fuel tanks in the middle. Um, two on the side which feed into that central one. We're using turbojets to get us up to speed. You know, three-point landing gear, few wings on there, canards on the front, but we have to just fly off the end of the runway to uh, get airborne on this thing. It has a lot of fuel in it. Um, it has quite a bit of rest mass. In fact, on paper, it doesn't have enough thrust to uh, take off vertically with just its main uh, rocket motor, but that's fine because we're using the wings to get ourselves up to altitude and uh, we'll burn off a bit of fuel, a bit of mass before then. Another innovation, let's say on this in terms of weird ass clunkiness is that we have not one but two autopilots on this. We have mechanical jab for the in space operations and we also have the avionics system for letting me uh, fly this manually back on the return. Actually, the mechanical jab does really well for these kind of launch profiles as well, since you can just kind of punch in the headings and the pitch and, and it'll fly the operation for you. It doesn't have a launch profile for an aircraft, but uh, that's fine because it's pretty easy to go. So we're getting up to altitude. We're going to light up our aerospike and there we go. The latest in Kerbal rocket technology, pushing our speed up above half a kilometer per second. As we climb, we watch the air get thinner and thinner and the efficiency of our jet engines start to drop off. We're going to cut these once they uh, stop providing thrust. We're up to 20 kilometers, aiming at a 45 degree pitch, just trying to basically make sure that we're traveling upwards as fast you know, as possible. So there we are, we're now, uh, the engines are off, we are now coasting into orbit, well thrusting into orbit, and we're reading off the orbital information. You can see the apoapse is above 40 kilometers now. So you know, we're only, we're not going to cruise too far vertical if we turn off the engines, but as we uh, get a little higher, we start to keel over just a little. We're now really out of the atmosphere proper and the, the drag is very little. So we're now basically, we're pushing towards the, the prograde direction and continuing to thrust. This will get our speed up and it means we're no longer counteracting gravity. We are just basically traveling on essentially a ballista, a thrusting ballistic trajectory or something like that. Um, so there we are. It looks like we've got a three, well, two, two tanks and a, about 20% of one tank left. We're just going to get ourselves up to orbit and get ourselves into a nice orbit. What a beautiful sunrise over Kerbin. It's kind of nice. One of the nice things about taking off at night is you get to see sunrise in space. There we go. Get ourselves, get build up that orbital speed. We're now down to two tanks of fuel here. This engine overheats a little, but uh, I haven't had an engine explode in a long time in Kerbal Space Program. I... I kind of miss that, to be honest. I, I really hope that when they introduce career mode that, uh, you know, you'll do research or something and you'll find that the first iterations of a rocket aren't quite as good as the final versions and they're they're more prone to overheating and things like that. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to some genuine challenges and hopefully some online leaderboards so that I can compete with some of the other um, YouTubers out there that are producing some really awesome work. In fact, uh, I know for a fact that some people will have already beaten this achievement, no doubt. So there, we have now got our periaps is above the surface, so we're really just rounding out the orbit. I mean, because we're in space now, we don't need much thrust. That's the beauty, you know, once we are in space, we are really just following Newton's perfect laws. I think you've noticed that I absolutely suck at landings, but uh, in space, I'm pretty good with my burns and with my tolerances and getting everything right. I mean, we should perhaps take a, a moment to talk about physics. I mean, there's a long journey ahead of us. And the other alternative is that I perhaps start to sing the Kerbin National Anthem. And, you know, really, I like kind of having viewers watch this. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, Newton. Uh, Newton's a smart guy. He uh, figured out the basic laws of motion. And the most simple law is that 
uh, an object in motion will continue in motion unless it's disturbed. This, the, the next law says that the magnitude of the change, the acceleration, depends upon the force. It's a function of the force. So uh, in spacecraft, the force is that we're generally dealing with. The, you're dealing with gravity, which uh, is a force that depends on distance. And, uh, but more importantly, the thing that we're actually working with is the forces generated by the rocket motors. So you can go in and build up a model of your um, spacecraft and you can figure out the mass of it and then you can look at the rocket motors attached to it and you'll see that the aerospike generates a thrust of 225 and the, this thing um, on paper has a mass of some 20 something so you can go in and figure out that uh, its acceleration is just over 10 meters per second which is what gravity is so the the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the, by the mass now uh, when you're calculating the final velocity that something can achieve this is mo slightly complicated because as you burn early your uh, mass is heavier and as you burn fuel you're essentially burning the fuel and throwing it out the back to provide reaction mass and that's a you know newton's second law every action and reaction every action has an equal and opposite reaction and these are these engines work on the principle of reaction. You're essentially taking the fuel and throwing it out there at some about five kilometers, five, six kilometers per second. And um, the result is your spacecraft moves forward. But yeah, the other result is that your spacecraft gets lighter. So your acceleration goes up over time. So to actually calculate the final velocity, for a given spacecraft, you need to know the exhaust velocity, the fuel mass, and it's a very simple equation. You basically take the um, exhaust velocity, which is about 6.2, I think, for an aerospike, and you divide it, or you multiply it by the natural logarithm, which is a fancy mathematical construct, which um, the natural logarithm of the final vehicle mass divided by the initial vehicle mass. Now, there's a slight problem with Kerbal Space Program in that the fuel mass actually per unit varies depending upon what kind of fuel tank you use. They haven't standardized all that yet, and different fuel tanks have different burn rates for the depending upon their, their type. Uh, it's a bit of a problem, so um, it's it's good if you basically work with one spacecraft, uh, one fuel type in your spacecraft. Regardless, yeah, I can go and compute the, the final velocity of this, and it has about 5.2 kilometers per second, which is, uh, you know, should be enough to get me onto the surface of Minmus and easily back to the surface. And in fact, you know, in theory, we have more than that because we have two different engine types on it, and the first, you know, 13 kilometers vertical, as you see, are handled by the turbojets, and the turbojets have much better performance than the rockets. They're something like 14 times better when they're at peak efficiency. But uh, once we're getting into space, you can basically take your remaining fuel and compute the amount of delta V you have left. And so I took a, a quick look at this, and uh, I, I think I'm pretty confident I can get all the way to Minmus and back. And uh, maybe with a bit of tuning, I might be able to get this to the moon. But first of all, let's work with what we know. So there we are. We're targeting these lakes. And you can see the spacecraft I, I landed there previously. It's actually a, a giant stack of a tower. Um, it was part of a, another video where I tried to basically take a spacecraft from uh, the planet Kerbin up to Minmus and then uh, relaunch it, return to Kerbin. And then from there, launch it, land on the moon, and return to Kerbin. Unfortunately, I landed a little heavily, and um, yeah, they're kind of stranded there. So um, yeah, that really makes me feel evil, because I land here, and I don't go and say hi to these guys. So there we all We're now uh, trying to land this thing like an aircraft. Now, uh, it does show my, my uh, me touching down there, but... You know, the, the thing with landing space planes is their landing gear is on the bottom and their engines are on the back. So you're not, you kind of have to uh, treat them differently. Yeah, it is possible to uh, use them like a runway in reverse. Uh, I have not done that here because I'm working with a very limited fuel budget. That's probably yeah, a good idea 
if you could get the orbit to match up, but I'm just going for a basic landing. Also worth noting is that at some point I reloaded a saved game, so I do not in fact have three fuel tanks full because that is a bug in the game. If you reload, empty fuel tanks will show up as fuel. Um, sometimes, you know, having to deal with kids means that I don't get to do these whole things in one sitting. The narration is of course done afterwards because, well, I have to kind of edit down the, the speed, you know, speed up sections and, you know, there's no way that you want to sit and watch a one plus hour video of me just talking about Newton's laws of motion. But yeah, look, we're, um, you know, three kilometers up. It's really good to have these lakes because they are, we know that they have a, a they're an exact zero point on the surface. So uh, you can, in fact, trust the altimeter in this case. You don't have to rely on, on jebs. So we're, we're basically slowing our, our lateral velocity down here. And we're just gonna, once we get low enough, we'll pitch onto our tail. And you notice I have deployed the landing gear. The plan will be that I will descend down close to the surface. And then uh, once we get a few meters up and we kill all our velocity, we're, we're basically gonna use the, the mechanical jab land, automated landing system. So it's gonna bring us down and, and make our touchdown speed very low. And once we get just above the surface, we will cut mechanical jab and we shall flip forwards onto our wheels. So here we go, 20 meters per second, less than 100 meters, 50 meters, 40, 30, 20, 10, 19, cutting the power. And there we go. Boom, oh, nice heavy landing. A bit of a bounce there, but we are on the surface look at that and uh yeah we've got a little bit of a little bit of fuel left maybe about one third of a tank so uh we need just over 300 and something meters per second i think because we want to lift off from the surface which doesn't take that much and then we need to kill our orbital velocity i mean one of the nice things about going to these outer moons is that um the amount, although it takes a lot of energy to get us up here, the amount of energy that it takes to get back is a lot lower as well. You know, you go to the moon, it doesn't take as much energy to get there. But, you know, as, even including the gravity well, even forgetting that, it takes more energy to uh, deorbit. There we are. Look, it's beautiful. We can just take this thing off like an airplane because the, the gravity is slow, so low, you know, and these runways are so smooth. And there we are just taking off. Uh, cutting our power now, trying to figure out where we are. And actually, that's really good position. I just want to kind of pitch up and and burn hard and see where we go. But I'm, I'm kind of aiming the right way. If I was launching the other direction, I'd, I'd probably want to make a proper orbit. But yeah, let's pitch up 45 degrees, throttle up, bring our speed up 300 meters per second. It's about 350. Let's see where we go. Oh, there we are. So we're leaving the sphere of influence and... Um, Oh yeah, I guess this is, I've been using the slightly modified um, conics drawing system. You might have noticed that earlier. Uh, I might explain that in the in my gravity assist video, which um, is sitting unedited on my disc at the moment. So I've, I'm gonna wanna deorbit this thing, but what I'm gonna do is burn out to, or not burn, I'm gonna time accelerate all the way out to Perry key or apple key i get these mixed up all the time all the way out to apple key where our velocity will be absolutely minuscule and um we should be able to bring it home with just the minimal amount of thrust and then the only thing we want to be careful of is that uh we're we're gonna hope that our final return position is somewhere over land because this has landing gear and it wants to land on land we don't want it to land on water so we're out there. Our, our velocity is 130. So, yeah, I guess maybe 400 meters per second is what we need. Or, yeah, 450, I guess, is what you need to get off of uh, the surface of Minmus and return. Yeah, that, that should be fine. So here we're going to just, uh, we're in deep space. So uh, just a small burn will do it. We don't want to overdo it. Because as we come in, we might... Ha we'll save a little bit of fuel to adjust our final landing spot. Like you see the conic sections coming up and telling us what we're going to encounter. So we have 3 million kilometers, or 1,000, 2,000, 
1,000, getting our velocity. Our orbital velocity is like 50 meters per second now. We're getting really low. Yeah, we're reducing our final orbital velocity to 31.9 meters per second. And of course, that is far too slow to maintain altitude. The forces of Kerbin will pull us back and we shall fly in there as time accelerates. There we go. We're just going to... We time accelerated, but I want to kind of flip around the time, the, the orientation of the spacecraft. And it looks like we are indeed lucky. We are going to fly in over a pretty large continent. Um, if it had looked otherwise, it would be possible early on to adjust the orbit. And I could have probably burned some saves and, you know, just basically adjusting my return position. But that feels like cheating. I would really like to have something that would plot my... Uh, rotation of Kerbin. You know how you have the conic sections that will show you where you arrive? I would like one that shows you the configuration of Kerbin's continents when you um, reach some critical altitude, say 35 kilometers. But look! There, we're down to uh, 1300 meters. I've still got it in times two acceleration because, uh, yes, I know I have a bad problem with um, landing with a double time speed. But look, we've got a bit of fuel left and everything. Now, if only the harvester would let us right-click on, on rocket motors and disable them. We could have a much better system. We could have those ramjets working and guiding our, our landing position. But never mind, we're down to normal acceleration and we're just kind of cruising down here. I'm barely touching the controls on this. This is like almost totally stable on its own. Yeah, I'm just going to flare up a little. We could probably land just fine, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make this nice and light, because you know what? These guys have been in zero g for a long time, and they probably won't appreciate a big bump. Look at this, no runway, but oh, what a beautiful touchdown! Hitting the brakes, and that's us, all the way to Minmus and back, with a single stage rocket and space plane. And maybe, yeah, Harvester manages to uh, add the ability to turn off aero spikes. We might be able to do that with... Um, we might be able to fly back to KSP next time. Or not, Kerbal Kennedy Kerbal Space Center. I don't know what it is. They call it KSC. Or maybe we could fly to KSC too. That secret location that is not marked in the map. So there you go. My first great achievement. I think I can take this to the moon with a bit more work. But uh, this is what I've got now. Ground distance covered, 11 million kilometers. Nice. Almost a, a nine and a half day mission. Highest altitude achieved, 63 million. And there's the final design that has set the record for highest touchdown ever. I'm Scott Manley. See you next time. Fly safe.